This video follows from my video titled Ultimate Character Farming Guide The Basics, and it is best viewed together with the companion video Ultimate Character Farming Guide Cantina Battles. This video covers character shards I recommend farming from light and dark side battles, with a particular focus on early level and mid level players, although I do also briefly cover end game farming. I do my best in these videos to narrow things down to the most essential characters so you don't stretch yourself too thinly. Light side battles and dark side battles require regular energy, that yellow lightning bolt. Remember not to let your energy be maxed out for very long as the flow of free energy provided by Capital Games pauses when your energy is full. Also take advantage of bonus energy provided by Capital Games by logging in and claiming it during special time windows each day. Check your notifications. Let's start with the earlier levels for the light side battles. We're only looking at hard nodes in this guide because character shards are only available on the hard nodes. Here you can see your light side character options in blue and your dark side character options in red. You'll need solid teams for both since you can only use light side characters in light side battles and dark side characters in dark side battles. Everyone on this page is available very early in the game and relatively cheaply at only 12 regular energy per attempt or roll, so you can get them to higher star levels faster than most characters. There are a few key picks here. Let's start with the light side. Either Jedi Consular or Luminara Unduli could serve as an early, cheap to farm light side healer. Healing is essential to completing stages at 3 stars, so you can then use sim tickets on them to save time as well as for surviving mid game events with multiple stages like Galactic War. Luminara is the superior healer, but the longer term bet is Jedi Consular, as he has a ship. Neither one is endgame material, so only invest in one of them as much as necessary, and don't bother investing in both, as you would be better served by switching to Barasafi later. As Jedi, you can use either one to help you earn Grandmaster Yoda and to complete the defense mod challenges. Next, we have Scavenger Rey, who is a damage dealing powerhouse. She has use throughout the game and has moderate squad arena viability. As a resistance member, she can help with completing the speed mod challenges, and she will be eventually required to obtain Jedi Training Rey. She's a top pick for sure. Clone Wars Chewbacca isn't endgame material and therefore won't need to be maxed out, but he helps with team survivability earlier in the game, and as a scoundrel who's available quickly and cheaply, he can help in completing the all-important credit heist event sooner. Switching over to dark side characters, Royal Guard is a top pick for lower level players. He will increase your odds of keeping your team alive so you can beat stages at 3 stars. He's not a top end game character, but he still has end game use here and there. As an Empire character, he can help with obtaining R2-D2 and completing the potency mod challenges. Stormtrooper would be an acceptable alternative to Royal Guard, but I would not get them both early on. General Veers is a solid Empire character who continues to have great utility in multiple end game events. As a very accessible Empire character, he can help with obtaining R2-D2 and completing the potency mod challenges. He's also essential for late game Imperial Trooper events. Talia, a Knight Sister, makes a solid accompaniment to Royal Guard or Stormtrooper to heal teams in dark side battles, although I'd switch over to Old Daka to fill that role as soon as you can farm Old Daka from Dark Side Hard Node 4B. I do not recommend Mace Windu this early in the game as his character is very weak, but he will eventually be required to activate his capital ship Endurance, which is required for the Ship Enhancement Droids Fleet Challenge, which occurs three times a week. You'll need those Ship Enhancement Droids to level up your ships, so you should get Mace Windu as your account approaches level 60 when the ship aspect of the game unlocks. But even then, his capital ship is the lowest priority of the four. You will also need Jawa and Dothcha to complete the critical damage mod challenges, but that's a low priority until past level 50, so farming them can wait for quite a while. First Order Stormtrooper is farmable here, and he, he can help to obtain BB-8 and complete the offense mod challenges, but unless you really want a First Order team to be your main dark side team through the mid game, and I would recommend Empire until the later levels, then I would hold off for other First Order options. Count Dooku is decent, but unless you get him in a bronze pack or something, I'd skip him as he's not essential for any event or challenge. 
Just as a heads up preview for the late game, you will eventually need 5 Ewoks to get additional Zeta materials. Ewok Elder is a must have for any Ewok team, and Tebow is an easy to farm option. But again, hold off on them. Moving on to the early dark side battles, we see a lot of duplicates from the early light side battles. Jedi Consular, or his alternative Luminara Unduli, and Clone Wars Chewbacca. Now, you are capped at five attempts, I sometimes call them rolls, per hard node each day, with crystals being required to make another five attempts. So having a character on multiple nodes means you can farm them a lot faster without rapidly draining crystals. And, bonus, the additional nodes for these three characters are still only 12 energy per attempt. That's another reason why either of these two Jedi healers and Clone Wars Chewie are recommended for lower level and mid level players. There are a few new picks here too. On the light side, we have Biggs Darklighter, who's a very solid rebel character. The biggest reason you're getting Biggs is for when ships unlock at level 60. Now, my guidance for early game players keep ships in mind, but usually doesn't emphasize farming characters for ships too hugely. But Biggs is an exception, because you will want almost any starting lineup of ships to have Biggs in it. And since the power of ships is significantly affected by the stats of their crew members, you will want Biggs to be as strong as he can be by the time your account hits level 60. So while you don't need to farm him from the very start or farm him quite as quickly as some of the other recommended picks I've highlighted here, you will need to pick up shards for Biggs gradually along the way, and at 12 energy per roll, he's the best pilot for the buck. Cementing his status as a top pick is that, as a rebel, Biggs can help you to unlock Emperor Palpatine and complete the Tenacity mod challenges. The other light side pick here is Ahsoka Tano. She does more damage than most Jedi and a lot of other early light side characters, and she's both cheap to farm and farmable in multiple places. Here, light side hard node 5D and the Cantina Battle Store. Plus, she has a decent ship you'll want to pick up later on, and so she will help you to hit the ground running with ships when you hit level 60. The third reason I like Ahsoka is the clincher for making her a top pick. Grandmaster Yoda got a recent rework that made him very powerful again, but you need to accumulate 5 Jedi to unlock him during his rare legendary event. Investing in Ahsoka will help you to get Yoda faster. As an additional bonus, she can be used to complete the defense mod challenges. On the dark side, there are two early gets here. The first is Boba Fett. He has a leader ability that you can use effectively with mixed teams, which is rare, and he's currently the only farmable scoundrel with a ship. And he's farmable early and cheaply in three locations, the two shown here and the Cantina Battle Store. Plus, he will be needed for bounty hunter specific challenges in late game events. But perhaps the biggest reason to get Boba early is because he's a strong scoundrel, and you can therefore use him along with Clone Wars Chewie and three other scoundrels to complete the all-important credit heist event, which will give some much-needed relief to what you will find will be a chronic shortage of credits in this game. Old Daka is another dark side winner. I recommend switching over from Talia to Old Daka as your primary healer for winning dark side battles as soon as this node becomes available. In addition to healing, she could also revive allies and stun enemies. So she will greatly increase your odds of completing levels at 3 stars, which requires all team members to be alive when the battle is over. That way, you don't have to go through the battles again and you can just use a sim ticket. This also makes Daka a real life time saver. As a bonus, Daka is an absolute must for endgame Night Sister teams, whereas Talia would not be a deal breaker. I also want to comment on two honorable mentions. For reasons I explain in my faction guide for Rebels, the Phoenix Rebels are my number one light side team for early and mid game players, and Sabine Wren, not Node 1A, is a Phoenix Rebel who's available very early. However, for me, Sabine is sixth out of the six Phoenix characters. I'd unlock her at some point so you can unlock the Phantom 2 ship she shares with Ezra and Chopper down the road, but otherwise she's not essential. However, she's not that far behind the other five Phoenix members, so if you just love Sabine and you want her in your Phoenix squad instead of Chopper or Zeb, you'd be okay with getting her. But if you're looking to keep the list of characters both narrow and deficient, and that's certainly my advice, then I'd probably skip her. The other honorable mention here is Resistance Trooper. He can help you get a full team of five to complete the speed mod challenges, but that's about it. So if you farm him, do it slowly. But frankly, you can skip him or substitute in another resistance character who you like better. 
I already discussed Jawa, Tebow, Dooku, Stormtrooper, and First Order Stormtrooper with the early light side battles, and nobody else that's new here is essential or terribly useful. Except that Fives has a pretty decent ship, but you don't need to worry about that for a long time. Onward to the later light side battles, of course the hard nodes, you'll notice in the blue boxes that the cost per battle or sim ticket goes up significantly as you progress through the levels, from 12 to 16 to 20. That means that characters farmed from these later nodes will take significantly longer to promote to higher star levels. A lot of advice fails to take this into account. Now, you do get more XP, credits, and equipment from these more expensive nodes, but in the long run, farming these nodes will increasingly be about obtaining character shards. So let's look at those. On the light side, we see Ahsoka Tano again, but she's farmable with less energy on other levels. So farm her elsewhere first, and then come here if you have extra energy. Likewise, if you picked Luminara Unduli over Jedi Consular. As I discuss in my faction guide for the resistance, you'll absolutely want to get both Finn and Poe, but they're both also available in locations that use other forms of game currency, so farm them from there first and only farm them from these very expensive hard nodes if you can afford the energy. So there really aren't any critical light side characters here for lower level and mid level players. Pretty good news, huh? On the dark side, General Veer shows up again, but like Ahsoka, he's farmable with less energy on earlier stages, so this node should be used only if you have extra energy. The only new dark side character here that I would really recommend is First Order TIE Pilot. You will need a First Order team to complete the offense mod challenges and to unlock BB-8, and you'll want this guy on your First Order team for both. His raw damage output occasionally makes him useful on other teams as well. But the clincher is that his ship is a top attacker. So investing in him before the mid game will position you well when you hit level 60. Keep his ship safe behind the taunt of Biggs' ship and he'll decimate the enemy. There's one honorable mention here and it's on the light side, and that's Jedi Knight Anakin. He's a somewhat better Jedi attacker than Ahsoka Tano, however he's not farmable on cheaper nodes like she is, and it would take longer to get him. And with Ezra Bridger being an even better Jedi attacker who's farmable very early, you won't really need Anakin. But the biggest reason I would go with Ahsoka instead of Anakin is that Jedi Knight Anakin, despite being one of the most renowned pilots in the Star Wars universe, doesn't have a ship in this game, whereas Ahsoka does. Now, here's a quick preview of whom you might farm from here later in the game, and there are quite a few. Farm Boy Luke is required to obtain Commander Luke Skywalker, but he's otherwise not useful, so farming him can wait quite a while. Plus, like Poe, he can be farmed much sooner and faster from Cantina Battles. See my faction guide for rebels for more details on that. Hoth Rebel Scout will be needed for light side territory battles later in the game, but he has no use elsewhere, so wait to farm him. Baze Malbus is decent, but expensive to farm, and you should have plenty of strong rebels by the time you can get him. Mother Talzin is essential for late game events that require or benefit from Night Sister teams. And getting her to 7 stars along with a decent Night Sister team can help you get extra Zeta ability mats. But you don't need her or a complete Night Sister team for quite a while. Stormtrooper, Snowtrooper, and Shore Trooper are all part of the Imperial Trooper subfaction of the Empire. And under a General Veer's lead, they kick butt late in the game. Shore Trooper is amazing on any Empire team, and the ship he co pilots is excellent and available on the same node as he is. As soon as you can get Shore Trooper, you should farm him and switch over to him from Royal Guard as your top Empire tank. Rivaling Shore Trooper for the title of best dark side tank is Darth Sion, who really shines on Sith teams. Fun fact, Darth Sion is also farmable in fleet battles on hard node 4D. Currently, no other character can be farmed in fleet battles. Finally, you'll also notice that a few dark side ships are farmable here and they are pretty decent. None are truly essential, but all would make solid additions to your fleet. However, you do want to prioritize your capital ships and some other ships first. Moving on to the later stages of the dark side battles, we again see a number of repeats for both light and dark side character recommendations. Scavenger Ray, Royal Guard, First Order TIE Pilot, and General Veers. Again, farm them from cheaper nodes first, and if you still have more energy left in a particular day, which may be the case if you're cashing in crystals for additional energy, and you should be doing that, 
then you can consider these additional more costly nodes, focusing on characters whom you have a pressing need to get, such as getting a Jedi to a certain star level when Yoda's legendary event is approaching. On the light side, the only new recommendation for lower level and especially mid-level players is Barriss Offee. She's really the only Jedi healer with impressive use in endgame events and challenges. If you can afford it, shift your Jedi Consular or Luminara farming over to Barriss. If you can't afford that, it's okay. Barriss can wait a bit, especially if you already have a full team of five Jedi that is poised to get or has already gotten Grandmaster Yoda and that can master the defense mod challenges. But if you do need a fifth Jedi, Barris is great, and she's farmable on two nodes here as well as in the guild store on a rotating basis. For dark side characters, I have some good news. I don't consider any of the new dark side players listed here to be urgent farms for early level or mid level players. How's that for helping you to narrow things down? But now, here are some quick bonus tips on whom you might want to farm from here later on in the game. Amalyn Holdo is the ideal tank for resistance teams. If she were available earlier, I'd strongly recommend her. But based on only being farmable on one expensive node, she's an iffy proposition until you have ample energy to spare. I'm still farming her myself. This is Mar is superb against the Sith, who are currently dominating the game. She's also therefore very useful in the Sith Triumvirate raid. But that's very late game content you shouldn't worry about for quite a while. I'm also still farming her myself. Wicket is one of the two characters who can, at 7 stars, help you to acquire extra Zeta ability mats. The other is Mother Talzin, as I mentioned earlier. You'll need four other half-decent Ewoks though, and since they have negligible use elsewhere in the game, hold off on this. I'm still farming Wicket myself. Darth Nihilus is truly sublime on Sith teams as he can penetrate defenses in a way that almost no other character can. He even has utility on non-Sith teams in the endgame. You absolutely must get him down the road, as he is one of the most dominant characters in the entire game and likely will be for a long time to come. Night Sister Zombie is essential for endgame Night Sister teams. Not even Darth Nihilus can keep her down. Bosk is a really nice bounty hunter for endgame bounty hunter stages, although not having a badass bounty hunter team isn't a deal breaker even for endgame players. I've only barely begun to farm him. You'll also note that a few light side ships are farmable here. You'll want Ghost and Phantom 2, so you can unlock Chimera, the most powerful capital ship in the game. They are piloted by the six Phoenix Rebels, all of whom you should have unlocked by the late game, and five of whom you should have invested in a great deal. Lastly, if you invested in Jedi Consular, you will definitely want his ship, also farmable here, as his ship can heal other ships. And that completes the guide for spending energy on characters. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think of this video. Then, watch the farming guide for Cantina Battles if you haven't yet. And after that, check out the Faction Guide videos and Store Guide videos.